I found the comment, y'all. Woo! It only took me two weeks to find it, but I finally found it. And sis, I can tell you why bullying is idolized, protected, and supported. Now I'm going to speak for the American experience because I have been told by many, only speak for the American experience. You don't represent us. It ain't my fault my video's getting pumped to you. I'm sorry. I'm just speaking my experience and apply or let it fly. You ain't gotta hop in my comments telling me that's your experience. Yeah, that's why I'm talking. But isn't policing how I speak and how I present myself a form of bullying? It is in case you didn't think it was. What's good, John Lonnie Appleton here? I don't know if I introduced myself. If I did, I'll delete this. But if I didn't, what's good? Let's address this comment. The reason why bullying is idolized, protected, and supported according to me is because this country benefits from bullies. See, bullies are the herdsmen and we are the sheeple. And as we travel along our pastures, trying to use the language, but I don't know nothing about sheep. I did read The Alchemist, but I still don't know the jargon. But as we journey along in our pastures, you know, when the, the sheep wander off, they send the, the herding dog and the herdsmen. Is it the dog or the herdsman? Somebody goes and gets the sheep. Maybe the herdsman stays with the sheep and the dog goes to go get the sheep. I don't know, but somebody brings the sheep back and that's who the bully is. A bully is going to say whatever's necessary to bring your ass back to the herd. Think about it. A bully identifies any anomaly, anything that's different. Also, a bully can identify what's different and an anomaly within themselves and use that as fuel to hate. Bullies will also use that hate to fuel them and that's what they use to mess with people who are outliers because they feel like outliers. But anyone who does not fit into the beautiful little bubble that they have created for us to exist in, think about it. People who are popular are the people who fit into the archetype perfectly. So you do not get bullied when you are walking that line. You get bullied when you have individuality and they bully that individuality out of you. They literally put laws and rules in place for us to stay in line. And when we get out of line, we get bullied for it. We wear red on the day that we're wearing blue, we get bullied for it. We eat apples on the day that they're eating oranges, we get bullied for it. We love our old beat up Dotson, but everybody's driving a GMC. So you get bullied for it. Bullies are idolized, protected, and supported because they are the herdsmen or they keep people in line. The police are the biggest bullies of them all. I think what we're running into is, and the language that I'm using isn't the correct language, but I, Lonnie, don't have the language necessary to alter my message with the feel good words without altering my message and it not be understood. But what I feel that we're running into is Dre doesn't see anything wrong with how he's parented up until this point. He's raised successfully three children and one more almost out the door. So in his mind, he doesn't see what the problem is. And so he's making efforts to change his parenting styles to appease me so to play nice he is making the changes but he doesn't see at, at the root or in his heart what is wrong with how he's parenting so that's why he reverts back to his previous parenting styles you know and the kids buck up against that because they're like hey we already all agreed that this isn't effective this isn't working and so the kids attach to how he's speaking to them and communicating with them and he's, of course, bucking up against that because he's like, I'm not doing anything wrong. What am I not supposed to say anything? And I'm like, it's not that you're not supposed to say anything, but we all agree that how things have been done have not been progressive. So when you speak to them in a manner that has not been progressive, they're going to respond to that. And so I think that's the, the issue that we're running into. What do you think? Now, no one's asking you to sugarcoat, but I think there's a difference between saying things that help the situation versus yeah, saying yeah. things that don't help the situation. No one said you said anything wrong. You said things that do not help the situation. You know what I'm saying? You're just saying something to hear to say the things that you want to say, and you're allowed to say those things. But 
can we agree that those things being said aren't helping the situation? And I think that's what you're receiving as far as back, not backlash, but you know, resistance. It's because you're saying things that aren't necessarily needed to be said. I feel like I don't, I don't have to make a poster the way it's supposed to feel good to it. It doesn't, it doesn't have to feel good. And see, I think that's what we're running into. Feel all warm and fuzzy for her. No, I don't want you to make it feel all warm and fuzzy. But we're having some sort of communication gap here. I would have went in there and just put the kids in the like, you shouldn't have been speeding. And, and, and you know better, right? Then you would have been like, that was perfect. No, if you would have went in there and said, what, what happened? What's going on? These are the ramifications for your choices. Do you understand that? And allowing her the space to speak instead of cutting her off. And have an actual conversation. Nigga, wash your stroke, I kill his mama, then I take his daddy. Walk up to the courtroom with your head down, nigga, you must have ratty. <laughs> I was young once, so I understand from that perspective. Has that child even hit puberty yet? Talking about killing somebody, their mama, and their daddy. Where is his daddy at? And please don't tell me either of his parents are okay with this. Please don't tell me either of his parents have sold their child out for a potential check. I get supporting your child's artistry, but the things that this child is saying are coming out of the mouths of babes. I can't on no level support this, and I'm not judging it. Let's, let's grow from this, because anyone out there who is just like, oh, that's their problem, no, it's ours. The sooner we realize that we are a collective, we are not individuals. That little boy is a part of us. Every little boy standing behind him is a part of us. Because if you don't think that you have to send your child out into a world that views us like that and presents like that, you are fooling. And like I said, true selflessness is selfishness. And to protect yours, you must protect theirs. I want to question where the men are. Because I checked that background and it was a bunch of little boys. Where's the men? For this little boy to get to this space in his life to where he would even say the words, I get creative expression. In West Philadelphia, born and raised, I get creative expression. But it's the things that you allow to come out of your mouth and I get it because once upon a time I wanted to be a rapper. And at the time it was Little Kim and Foxy Brown so I was saying some nasty stuff because I was like, if nasty sells, I got some nasty stuff to say. Don't you worry, nothing ever was released so you will not find me. But what I'm saying is I get it. We are in a drill rap era. All we talk about is murder, murder, murder. We got murder on our minds, I get it. But that in itself is the trap, right? Because when I was rapping about sex, I could imagine building an image on something and having to remain in that space. Little Kim is damn near 50, still trying to be a sex symbol because that's her brand. So this little boy is building a brand. I don't know who this little boy is. He could be Poindexter in these streets. Straight A student, model child at home. But the image that he's portraying is now being replicated in our children. Again, not our children, but our children collectively in community. And what this little boy is missing in every little boy in this video and whoever's behind the camera and probably the neighborhood that he's rapping in right now, what they're missing is a sense of community. And why is that? We get a little change and get as far away from the hood as we can. They literally call Chicago Chirac. Kids can't go to school without fear of being murdered by people that look like them, by people who ain't even old enough to get a driver's license. Help me understand. Why is this us? Yes, us, because we are a community. If one's doing bad, we're all doing bad. It's just really, it's mind boggling that they have created such an inertia around us that rapping about killing somebody's mom and daddy, literally selling out your community for a little bit of money. That's how bad they got.